Alright, so welcome back. Uh, time to start talking about the lab for this unit. Uh, the lab is called Color Converter. Uh, let's go ahead and start by looking at a demo of it. Uh, so I've got a solution up here. Uh, color Converter, the idea is that you've got an RGB color uh, and you want to convert it to hex. Uh, so you can see the example here starts with a, a color which has like 181, which turns out to be B5, uh, 9, you know, which is 9, uh, and 57, which in hex would be 3, 9. Um, this color, by the way, this is the Rolls-Hulman red color. And the idea is that if you were to change uh, the values in here, so let's say we just took it to, uh, to all blue, uh, and we clicked on convert to hex, uh, what it would do is it would uh, do a couple things, right? So primarily it shows you what the value is in hex, which in this case is uh, 0000FF. It also updated the, uh, the color here. Uh, you probably also noticed the, uh, the little animation that you got from uh, Bootstrap. Um, so if I change it to something, the uh, the bars kind of animate to that position. It's kind of neat. You actually got that for free. Bootstrap just kind of did that for you. Um, and so we're using Bootstrap here mainly because it's just easier uh, to make the page look nice. Uh, and so it's just easier for me. Um, another feature that you have to do is you have to be able to convert the other way. So if you click this button that says, you know, convert from hex to RGB, um, you can see that the page changed dramatically, right? So what I'm really doing is I'm just hiding one element uh, and showing another, um, and then if I click it again, I'm reversing it, right? So I'm, I'm hiding this one, I'm showing this one. Um, so there's a box up here uh, that I'm just swapping out, right? So depending on, on who, I, who I have displayed. Um, so if you're going from hex to RGB, um, one thing you'll notice is that the values have to be preserved. Uh, so that's one of the things I want you to implement. Um, so if I change this to uh, 150, um, I can see that whenever I come into here, um, it's got my, you know, 150s uh, saved. And then if I wanted to, I could set a different color in here. Let's say I just wanted, um, I don't know, CC, CC, CC. Uh, that's going to be nearly a white color, uh, so a very light gray. And if I switch back to the RGB, uh, you can see that it preserves those values. In addition to uh, switching back and forth, I also want you to listen for another event. Um, if somebody is in one of the boxes and they hit enter, uh, I want you to listen for an enter key, um, and then I want you to update the view uh, based on um, the key of enter being pressed as well. Uh, that should work on all three RGB boxes, uh, and likewise, if you if you hit enter in the hex box, uh, it should update that. Other little nuance features that I'd like for you to add, if somebody types in 300, say for green, uh, I would like for you to cap it at 255. Uh, likewise, if somebody puts in a negative value, uh, I would like for you to cap it uh, at zero. As far as the hex goes, though, it's kind of harder to do the, the validation checking. Um, and so, like, if somebody leaves not enough digits, um, I've got some code to help you say, like, not a number and things like that. Um, you don't have to be as thorough about checking the hex stuff uh, as you do with the, the RGB. So that's a, a demo of the program. Uh, if I was to formally list the requirements, uh, you could read through this formal list of requirements. Some things in this requirements um, are going to cause you to have to learn some new skills. So, for example, just limiting something involves like more math skills uh, than you've learned before. Uh, the progress bar, um, and so how do you change the progress bar? It's actually easy. It's just the uh, the width property in the CSS needs to be changed. So you're going to use the uh, the CSS function which we did not use last time, but it's pretty easy. So that's how I would change the uh, the width, right? That says CSS width 57, not that you can actually read my handwriting over there. Um, you're also gonna have to do things like uh, to learn for the enter button. Um, and I'm gonna give you some advice for these things now, but really when you get into the labs, you might have to use some references, like some of the references we talked about before, um, and figure out these details. They're not hard things, they're just things we haven't necessarily directly covered. Um, so here's some references uh, to help you out. Um, so for the enter key, uh, I like to use key up. You can also use key press, that's fine. Key down would happen sooner if you want it as well. And the enter button is 13. So you're going to have to figure out um, how to get um, uh, which key was pressed um, and then respond just to the number 13. There's some links in here uh, which you can uh, look up to, to see that information. You can also find those on your own. Other things you're going to have to do is you're going to be doing a lot more math than you've done in any other thing. Um, and so for doing this conversion from, from hex
hex to decimal and then from decimal back to hex. Um, we've got some links to help you out here. Um, and so instead of doing it completely from scratch, this, this hex to RGB conversion, obviously people have written this JavaScript code before. Um, and here's a website that I found uh, that, that shows you some of the math. And I've actually gone ahead and put some of that into the lab for you, uh, just because we don't want to weigh you down with the math too much. It's not hard, uh, but I want to make sure you're focusing on other things. So some of the math is in there for you. Another thing I wanted to mention is there's uh, a ton of different ways to show and hide things, right? So jQuery has their way to do it. They have a show and a hide function. And if you wanted to use those, you could. Um, Bootstrap has kind of their way to do it. Uh, so there's this class called hidden. Um, and if you add the class hidden, then the thing is gone. Um, and then if you remove the class hidden, then it shows up. And really both of these, what both of these really do is they use uh, the display property um, of either none uh, or they set it back to whatever its default is. In this case, it was a div, uh, so you'd say block. All three of these approaches work, uh, so you can actually do whatever you want. But if you look at the HTML for the starting page, it actually is kind of using bootstrap tricks. Um, so you might find it easiest to do the showing and hiding of the elements um, the bootstrap way. And that's just because the initial HTML has that hidden class. Um, so if you wanted to solve this problem without changing uh, the original HTML, you might find the bootstrap way to be easiest for this lab. But to be honest, if you're doing this stuff on your own, they're all three trivially easy and you use whatever you want, right? All right, and that's kind of it. Uh, I mean, at this point, you can start the lab. Uh, once you finish the lab, make sure you deploy it and submit it. Um, and that's actually kind of it for the, uh, the entire unit. So hopefully, uh, by the end of uh, this unit, by the time you finish the lab, um, you should be really good at listening things for like document ready, clicks and keys. So those events are all pretty easy for you. Um, and then you'll be uh, pretty easy of changing like your model object, which is just your variables. So whatever variables track uh, your program. Uh, this one, we have some hints as to what variables you should probably be using to track your, your progress. Things like changing text, uh, changing classes, uh, and then changing CSS values, all very easy. And hopefully you feel really comfortable with these skills because these are kind of the, the basic building blocks of most JavaScript things you'll do. All right, so that's it for this time. Uh, go work the lab, and we'll see you next time. Bye.